Hello there, I'm Colleen. I'm Anders. And I'm Daniel. We're three nerds that met through our love of science fiction and fantasy storytelling. Of course, one of our favorites is George Lucas's signature achievement, Star Wars. And if there's one thing the internet definitely doesn't have enough of, it's nerds talking about Star Wars. So here we are with yet another Star Wars podcast, where each week we discuss one of the films in the current Star Wars canon. From the sands of Tatooine to the levels of Coruscant, we cover it all. Yet another Star Wars podcast is available wherever you get your podcast and is part of the Forgotten Entertainment family. Hey there, I'm Mr. Black. And I'm Mr. Green. And we're a couple of guys who met in a comic book store. Together we host the Pint O' Comics podcast, where we invite listeners to join us to talk about movies, TV, comics, music, or just whatever. Starting very soon, we'll be joining up with the fine folks at Forgotten Entertainment, for a special limited series called On the QT, where we talk Tarantino. Every week for 10 weeks, a guest will join us to chat about every Quentin Tarantino movie from Reservoir Dogs to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So join us starting in May 2021. On the QT is available wherever you download your podcasts and is part of the Forgotten Entertainment family. Ooh, that's a bingo. Do you happen to have a chance cube? I don't, but I do have some dice from Marvel Dice Throne. Coming soon, Marvel Dice Throne is a fast and fun board game for all ages. Each player selects one of eight heroes to face off in a head-to-head -head battle to see who earns the right to take the throne. Gameplay involves strategically rolling dice to activate special abilities, playing unique hero cards to manipulate results, and upgrading your hero board to power up your stats. The project is currently being crowdfunded on Kickstarter, so head there now to check out their Kickstarter exclusives and reserve your copy today. Welcome, Nerdy Knights of the Well-Rounded Table, to Bohemian Geek Studies, where we take extremely dorky dives into our favorite fandoms. I'm Colleen McMillan, Jedi Master and Rebel Scum Collaborator. And I am Pirate Jedi Anders Drew. But no matter what rank you carry, one thing will always remain constant. Much to learn, we still have. Mm-hmm. And this season on Bohemian Geek Studies, we're taking our detailed dorky dive into Star Wars Rebels. Today, we're diving into Season 4, Episodes 7, 8, and nine, <laughs> entitled Kindred, Crawler Commandeers, and Rebel Assault. We have done our best to scramble our signal. We will be doing our absolute best to avoid spoilers for the rest of season four, but anything else in Star Wars is officially fair game. So consider that your spoiler warning. And I will definitely throw in an adult content warning for the younglings. So without further ado, let's lock those S foils in attack position and explore our holocrons of knowledge. Colleen? Punch it and open that first holocron. Ooh. All right, we're going to try and get through these as fast as we can, everyone. <laughs> first, we're starting with the first holocron, the Journal of the Wills, where we go over the plot and episode synopsis for the week. Kindred starts off with Kanan and Hera, <laughs> so beautiful, discussing how it seems like they've always been drawn to Lothal, but Kanan isn't sure why yet. Meanwhile, Ezra, Zeb, and Jai are trying to retrieve the hyperdrive that Ezra and Sabine stole from the TIE Defender which they find with the help of the white loath cat. This is like Ezra's familiar at this yeah. point. I mean, when in doubt, just follow the loath cat. It, it works always. out. Yeah, he, he will always lead you right. Governor Price is leading the recovery team for the Empire, but Thrawn is sending one of his personal agents to help, as her recent defeats show she might not be up to the task anymore. The assassin, Rook. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Thrawn pronounces this name. <laughs> arrives and almost immediately smells a Lasat nearby. Poor Zeb canonically smells bad. <laughs> yeah. So Jai notices Rook approaching, uh, and he and Ezra try to pull a distraction. They try to, they're wearing Stormtrooper outfits, and they try to pull the uh, I am Trooper 5 to whatever, while Zeb mm -hmm. gets away with the hyperdrive, but no luck. They, it's not going to work. They're in a fight, and Price is approaching with some more reinforcements. Zeb hilariously manages to steal a troop carrier when they've kind of taken over his speeder bike. Mm -hmm. and, but when everyone's fleeing, Rook does get a tracker placed on Ezra and Jai's speeder. Back at the camp, Sabine's installed the hyperdrive into Ryder's U-Wing, and she's like 50-50 on it'll work. But Hera has faith in her. She absolutely has faith in her abilities. And good thing, too. Because Ezra spots the approaching Imperial troops who have tracked them, complete with Rook and Price, who are kind of busy sniping at each other over whether or not the other one even needs to be there. 
yeah. I, I got this. Mm-hmm. No, I got this. You're extra. No, you're extra. Uh, Hera says goodbye to Kanan, complete with a kiss, finally, and even says, may the force be with you as she gets into the wing and departs with Chopper and the flight reporter. Yes. And as we've already established, may the force with you means I love you, basically. <laughs> like it, it just does, especially here. <laughs> Looking for an escape route as response, the white loath wolf this time and insists that they trust him and follow him. It leads them to a cave system, but seems to be waiting for Kanan for some reason. The empire is bombing the mountains so the rebels escape into the caves. They notice ancient paintings on the wall and a mysterious light appears strange they join hands and connect with the loath wolf and head into the tunnel this is some creepy shit happening yeah it's really weird it's very strange very kind of like surreal not sure what's going on everyone awakens in a field but then the field doesn't stay there (laughs) they're in a field and then all of a sudden they're in another cave they discover that they've been transferred to the southern hemisphere the other side of the planet (laughs) wild shit Ezra finds Kanan in a cave and reminds him, that reminds him of the Jedi Temple on Lothal, complete with even more cave paintings. Like, these early Lothal people were very prolific with their art. Yeah. The White Wolf appears again and says only one word, doom. Ezra's like, what the shit? He said this before. Like, why does he keep saying this? Kanan reveals to Ezra that his original name is, in fact, Caleb Doom. And Ezra's like, oh all right like should we start calling you caleb so so this is a you guys thing (laughs) yeah exactly yeah this isn't about me anymore (laughs) the episode ends with Hera arriving on yavin 4 delivering the tie defender flight recorder to mon mothma flo's favorite and rebel command yep then we get into crawler commandeers which starts off with some bad news sabine can't get any transmissions out with their radio equipment Mm. Uh, close by, the rebels spot a mining guild crawler complete with a long-range transmitter, so they decide they're going to take that. Mm-hmm. Back on Yavin, Hera is imploring. She is making every bit of a case that she can to the rebel command council that they need to authorize a new attack on Lothal and destroy the TIE Defender Factory, as it is such a mm-hmm. huge, huge threat. Mon yeah. Mothma asks her to wait outside while they discuss the options. Mm. Why don't you just go to the waiting room while the grown-ups yeah, talk? Well, don't ever say that yeah, to Hera. Too close. Yeah, no kidding. A little too close to the situation. Why don't you go? And no. <laughs> the rebels take the cockpit of the crawler back on Lothal. And not before the captain is able to start a distress call, though. This captain is hysterical. He is a great villain. Ezra attempts to dissuade the Empire with his mostly passable impression <laughs> of the captain. He's like, do I sound like that? Oh, baby, you do sound like that. Yeah. But it won't buy them much time. While investigating another signal coming from the back of the crawler, Visago, <laughs> one of the slave workers on the crawler, he is overjoyed that his friends, quote unquote, his friends, have come to rescue him, I guess. <laughs> Seven Cannon also fight with the Trandoshan slave driver, scary, very scary, freeing the rest of the workers. Then we go back to Yavin. My Mothma tells Hera that they still haven't reached a decision. Like, seriously, what are they even doing in there? There are other considerations, you know, to take into the fact. Yeah. I mean, you got to think about these things. The Empire has issued Protocol 13, leading to a complete evacuation of all Imperial personnel from a specified planet. They don't know which planet, or they don't mention which planet. They just know that it's happening. This means another Imperial project is underway. Mm, wonder what that is. Hera understands the significance, but reminds them all that they cannot afford to delay when it comes to Lothal and the Tide Defenders. Yeah, like, I I get that you got other stuff going on, but seriously, like, this is a now problem. Yeah, this is, we need to. This is a right now problem. This isn't Mm -hmm. even a tomorrow problem. It's a right now. Mm -mm. So then we jump back to the crawler. The rebels have kind of spied these incoming gunships. Visago impersonates the captain. He doesn't even bother trying to do the voice. Um... But even he can't avoid getting boarded. They're, they got to discuss call. They're coming. They're boarding. Yeah. Zeb impersonates the slave driver <laughs> as the cockpit is searched. Fortunately, the Imperials don't find the captain imprisoned in the closet. Unfortunately, that's because he escaped through the air ducts. 
and sabotage the crawler's power absolutely pulls an ezra ezra reluctantly goes in after him being like i don't crawl through ducks anymore and they're like no it's your thing man you you do that yep yeah you're still small get in there (laughs) yep and he makes it down to the engine room where he fights he defeats the captain basically by throwing him into the reactor (laughs) and the and he gets the reactors back online Visago and all the other freed slaves agree to join with the rebels, and they're able to finally get in touch with Hera, who informs them that the attack on Lothal has finally, once again, been authorized. They are coming with fighters. It's happening. It's yes, finally happening. <laughs> After all of this, we have to attack Lothal. They're finally going to attack Lothal. I'm sure it'll go fine. Oh gosh. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Next episode, Rebel Assault gives us just that there's a large imperial blockade over Lothal and a small rebel strike force drops out of hyperspace to attack. Thrawn is in command of the Star Destroyers and tells his pilot that no rebel ships can be allowed to make it through. On the surface, Ezra and the rest of the rebels plant explosives that take out the Empire's air defense cannons. Much to Price's chagrin, she just failing all over the place, you guys. Thrawn assures her that no rebel fighters will make it to the factory. Up in the sky, the battle is on. Hera takes on Scarus and his TIE Defender elites and pulls some really amazing maneuvers. Hera's flying, flying abilities in this episode are just like unparalleled. Insane. Usually you see her maneuvering with a larger ship, ship like the Ghost, but to see her in a fighter and some of the things that she takes on is just incredible. Managing, mm-hmm. she manages to evade the TIE Defender and takes out a destroyer all at the same time, which gives the mm-hmm. rebels the hole they need to get through the blockade. Thrawn is actually impressed. He's like, you know what? Hera got some chops. Respects. But Mm -hmm. being Thrawn, he's planned far ahead and has more fighters waiting in atmosphere, hidden by the clouds. Mm -hmm. The rebels are completely overrun. And Ezra and his friends are forced to watch when they think the fighters are breaking through the clouds, they are in fact falling and crashing down into the surface. Yeah. The entire attack force is destroyed and the factory is completely safe. A couple of ships do manage to actually pull off a crash landing. Thrawn sends Rook to capture any surviving pilots, especially Hera. Hera, of course, has indeed survived. She crashes in an alley and Chopper gets her out of her fighter and some local Lothal people get tell her and Chopper to run. But unfortunately, Chopper's transmitter is damaged and she can't contact Kanan. Oh, okay. Mm. The Spectres are fleeing, but Kanan decides that he has to go back. Ezra recognizes that he must do this and leads the rest of the team away. Price discovers Hera's ship has been found and orders the entire district to be searched for her. Hera and Chopper find Mart Matten about to be captured and they save him. Yeah, but mm, his droid is destroyed. They take the droid's transmitter to replace choppers. Unfortunately, now the Empire is jamming everything. They need to run as Rook has found them. Of course, he fucking has. He manages to defeat Hera, but is then stunned from behind by a chopper. And yes, murder the droid. Chopper. Should have put in more power. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kanan's on approach to the city when, again, he comes across the White Loth Wolf. Mm-hmm. And after the wolf says Dune once again, Kanan and he just kind of come to some kind of understanding and says, all right, what? tell me what needs to be done. Yeah. Hera, Mart, and Chopper are in search of a sewer hatch to kind of escape through like they've done before. And while they find one, it's directly underneath an Imperial walker. Mm-hmm. Mart kind of filling in as an Ezra <laughs> figure causes a diversion. Mm-hmm. While Hera takes out the walker. Impressive stuff, honestly, on her part. On yeah. her part. But Hera's unable to follow the others into the tunnel. She gets trapped and captured mm-hmm. and is eventually confronted by Price, who stuns her. Martin Chopper find an escape hatch, again, kind of painted with Sabine's Firebird. And Kanan's the one who opens it from the outside. Mart tries to tell Kanan about Hera, but he already knows. He can feel it. Uh, He knows there's nothing else that Mart could do, but there's something he can do now. Of course, he does not elaborate on this. (laughs) And the three of them take off on Kanan's speeder bike. End of episode. A lot happening This leaves us in a really interesting place at the end. Yes. 
All right, well, we're going to move into our second holocron, The Will of the Force. This is where we explore the theme or themes from these episodes. So, Colleen, what were the themes presented in these three? Okay, so for episode seven, our theme is faith and destiny. The Force is all about faith and free will. Got to have both and where they meet. A lot of Star Wars deals with these elements, like are things meant to happen a certain way? Were the wolves destined to awaken now on Lothal? It's really hard to say because if the Empire hadn't come to the planet, they probably would have stayed dormant. Like Ezra says, they haven't seen been seen for a hundred years. And if the Empire wasn't there, maybe they wouldn't have woken up. And then Kanan brings up a good point. Like were he and Hera drawn to Lothal because of Ezra? Or is it something else? Is the force leading them? Is this the light side rising kind of situation going on? And it has to do with Kanan's faith in the force, the idea of destiny, why everyone did show up on Lothal. I think we might find out. <laughs> By the end of Rebels, we might find out what's going on here. Next for episode eight, this one is not, it's more of a broad kind of theme for the episode and for like all three of these episodes. It's persistence. The rebels drive to help others who are in need brings more people to their cause in this episode. Their kind of tenacity is very inspiring, especially in the face of a massive enemy. Even in the next episode, when Hera crashes, that people of Lothal are going to help her. Like yeah. they know that she's technically an enemy combatant, and yet they're like, get out of here. Like we need to make sure that you escape. And they give her an escape route. So it's like persistence against a foe that is seemingly undefeatable will bring other people to your cause. Good job, Rebels. Yay! <laughs> At least these people will. Mon Mothma brings people to the cause in a different way. <laughs> yeah. It's not quite as inspiring as people who are on the ground fighting like Hera, but it's still another kind of persistence. And then for episode nine, we have the greater good. Always the greater good. Kanan is fully ready to race into the fray to rescue Hera, but there's really no time for him to do that. He has other things he needs to be doing. He still has a role to play the, for the rebellion. Running in with no plan would probably get him captured or killed. Like, really. He doesn't know where Hera is. He'd be kind of following his force in like intuition at this point. And the Lothwolf just isn't here to coddle him. He's like, no, this isn't where you're meant to be. He knows what must be done in the grand, grander scheme of things. And he's trying to turn Kanan like, we know you love Hera, but you know, there's other things that need to be done. And Hera especially. Hera usually has a slightly bigger picture view than Kanan yes. does of yes. things. So it's nice mm -hmm. to see him listening to her. Imagine that. Yeah. He needed to save Mart and Chop. Yeah. Like he needed to be there for them. And he was. I mean, it was good that he turned around because then he was able to get them but he wasn't supposed to chase after Hera. No. All right, next up we have our series theme, which is family. I mean, we've talked about the chosen family, but just family in general, family is always there for each other. But just like when you grow up and you move out of your childhood home, you move away from your kind of nuclear family union, it means change. Things change over time. The ghost crew has changed and evolved a lot as individuals over the last four seasons. And we're starting to see how that affects the family dynamic as well. They've spent time apart from each other. They are doing their own things. They're willing to recognize the greater good, but they still have some of those great smaller banter moments are there. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. Crawler Commandeers is a little bit of a filler episode, but it's got some yeah. absolutely amazing exchanges between Hera, or not Hera, sorry, Sabine, Zeb, and Ezra in the cockpit, yes. the way that they're like making fun of each other, but still, yes. still ribbing on each other. But in the end, they will always show up for each other. Always. Hera spends time away from the family these episodes, but she's doing it and she is fighting and advocating for them and their cause the entire time. Kanan... Like we said, he originally thinks he's rushing in to save Hera, but knows the best way to actually help is to go and save Jai and Chopper. Similarly, when he goes off, Ezra recognizes that actually the way to support Kanan in this moment is not to chase off with him, it's to lead everybody else away. Yeah. So they all, they know each other so well, they have blended together, but this is just a different way of looking at a family. You know, things yes. look different from childhood to adulthood. <laughs> it's fine. 
<laughs> yes, everyone, everyone and everything is fine. <laughs> Speaking of everyone, um, <laughs> let's go into our third holocron, The Galaxy's Populous, where we take a look at the characters and relationships highlighted in mm -hmm. these episodes. Starting off with Kanan and Hera, Actually, not starting off on that. I'm sure Flo will have many thoughts on this later, so we're just gonna let her let her handle that one. And then we have <laughs> fucking Arinda Price. She's got a lot of bluster and kind of pomp circumstance about her, but you can tell she's starting to get a little worried. Thrawn is not happy with her, and mm -hmm. she desperately needs to stay in his good graces in order to maintain her position. Their relationship yep. in the Thrawn novels, the way it started, was very much mutually beneficial. But now yeah. Thrawn has more power than she does, really. Yeah. And yeah. she has to now prove herself to him in order to stay within the imperial, the imperial social sphere that she loves and the command structure that gives her mm -hmm. her power. Yep. She's desperate, everyone. You know who's not desperate? <laughs> Thrawn. <laughs> not even a little bit. Not this ten. man always has a plan doesn't matter he he's ready he's always ready Thrawn shows his long-term planning by having the second wave of fighters waiting in the wings like he knows Hera is probably going to break through the first line of defense he's not dumb he's like Hera's really good she's mm -hmm. probably gonna get through he's also starting to show that you know what happens when his patients which so far he seemed to have like an endless supply of patients but now it's wearing thin Sending in Rook is almost like Thanos picking up the gauntlet and saying, fine, I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Mm -hmm. We worry about anyone who's going to get caught in the way of this. Unless it's Bryce, that would be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be fine. Speaking of assassins, we have Rook. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rook says that. It's so good. It's so, so good. I love you. Love you so much, Lars Mickelson. Please say that name over and over forever. So Rook is a Nogri from the planet Honogur. I think that's how you say it. I'm probably pronouncing it horribly. I need to listen to the audiobook of Heir to the Empire. <laughs> he mainly figures into legends. Like this is Rook's canon, like debut basically, and his really only canon appearance. He's Thrawn's chief bodyguard and security coordinator in Heir to the Empire, and ends up having a really massive role to play in that trilogy. The Nogri males were subjugated by the Empire as soldiers in Legends, so that's what happened to Rook as well. It'd be really interesting if they got an expanded role in canon. I would love to see more Nogri. It'd be so cool. They're like these little balls of assassination energy. <laughs> like, Who knows? Maybe Bad Batch. <gasps> that'd be so cool. Bring in the Nogri. We want to see more of them, please. In Rebels, though, Rook is kind of Thrawn's jack of all trades, though he's best at tracking infiltration and hand-to-hand -hand combat, mm -hmm. and also snark. <laughs> Real good at the snark at price. Fantastic. We love it. And then we have Ezra and the White Lost Cat. Now, Ezra's always had a strong connection with the animals on and off the fall, but that connection is really, really growing to a point where it seems like the planet itself is kind of trying to communicate with him. You know, we've seen him sort of take control of creatures before, but now the Loth Cats are actually like preempting his needs. They are showing up without him needing to call them for help. They are guiding him where he needs to go. A couple episodes ago, he just thought about, oh, we're going to need a distraction over here. And the cats just took off without him even noticing that they were there. <laughs> right. He didn't order them to do anything. No. They just did it. He's come a long way. Yeah. Since the cave with the freaking Fearnox. Like he had yeah. to actually coerce them or order them to do mm -hmm. stuff. This time the low cats are like, we'll help you. <laughs> that guy looks like he needs help. Let's go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> cats, endlessly cooperative beings. Mm. <laughs> Good job, Ezra. <laughs> All right. Next up, our fourth holocron, binding the galaxy together. This is where we go over the homages, Easter eggs, connections, callbacks from these episodes. Starting mm -hmm. off, you know what? In Star Wars, we love a good speeder chase. <laughs> from the trees of Endor and Return of the Jedi to that canyon in The Mandalorian, Stormtroopers mm -hmm. should know by now that this just doesn't go well for them. It really Stop trying. Not. Yeah, just don't do it. No, just don't. We're going to talk about that a lot in The Ninth Jedi, too, when we go mm -hmm. over it in Visions. Next, we have dome ships. We've seen the Imperial Dome facility on Lothal at the Capitol, 
but here we see them in orbit as well. They look kind of freaky, like yeah. probe droidy. They look almost like fan. um almost like uh what's his name? Brainiac's ship oh, in yes. DC Comics. Mm -hmm, for sure. Like they should have tentacles or something. Yes. Yeah, they definitely look like they should have tentacles coming out the bottom. Like, uh, no, thank you. They kind of look like the Trade Federation spheres also from the prequels, priming us that these facilities are also ships. Like these are ships, folks. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, uh, when it gets strange like this, it's a good thing. So Zeb's line to Ryder and Ryder's response of how have you people stayed alive this long? calls back to this running joke throughout Rebels, you know, we're always happy to see them kind of pull off a crazy plan, but you need to remember that from outside of our core family unit, this looks freaking crazy. Yes, often <laughs> Anakin's plans in Clone Wars were like this also. Yeah. <laughs> it's nuts, but somehow we survive. <laughs> Next, we have follow the creatures. Yes, Ezra's learned to follow the Loth cat, but also following the Loth wolves here is similar to The Last Jedi, where the Resistance follow the Vulptex. I love them, the ice boxes <laughs> so much, in order to escape on the planet crate. Mm -hmm. The ice boxes can't really do the same thing as the Loth wolves can, but still, they're following a canine creature into a cave. Yes, specifically a white canine cure creature, a pure yes. canine creature, if yeah. you will. <laughs> yeah. Bees. Yeah. Next up, we have that weird force tunnel. Now, at the start of the wolves kind of force walk, it's what we tend to like to call it. It's not an official term, but it works. The light kind of reflects in Ezra's eyes, and it looks an awful lot to me like a hyperspace jump. Mm -hmm. It definitely looks like that. The wolf is definitely manipulating the force in some way. Yes. They do not explain it here for us, though, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Star Wars. Next, we have the cave paintings. I love these. There's so many like little connections and callbacks in the paintings. But one of them in the cave in the southern atmosphere has a figure that looks an awful lot like Yoda. At the very least, one of his species. Yes, it might not be Yoda himself. He is very old, but I have a feeling that these cave paintings are even older. Yeah. I think this is some old shit, you guys. <laughs> so Jedi have either been on the planet, Yoda's people have been on the planet. A lot is going down on Lothal. Next up, hey, I like that song. <laughs> so when they do take take out the mining captain, he's got his headphones on and he's listening to some music. It is, in fact, the exact same song Zeb was listening to when he was kind of rocking out with a beer at the mm -hmm. Mystery of Chopper Base. The official title of that track on the soundtrack is Zeb Rock. <laughs> that's fantastic. I don't think that's probably the name of the song in canon, but for no. our purposes, it is Zeb's Rock. Oh, next, one of the best, best parts <laughs> of everything, Star Wars. Everything's fine. We're fine here now. How are you? Ezra on the Crawler Com is a pretty clear homage to Han Solo on the Death Star in A New Hope, for real. <laughs> yeah. No need. <laughs> We're good. We're fine. Everything's like, it's just a reactor leak. They're like, what? <laughs> That's going to get somebody to come to the damn thing. Yeah. For real. <laughs> Next up, Vizago's back. Everybody be happy, Fazago's back. They're there to rescue him, maybe. So now we know what happened after he was caught smuggling the rebels onto Lothal. Apparently he didn't just talk his way out of it. Nope. The, they took the puffer pigs and Fazago got turned into a slave. Yep. Oh, poor buddy. Next we have immediate evacuation from an occupied planet. What could this be? Mm. We're going to talk about this later in our questions section, but think about it until we get there. Where could they be talking about? Next up, Ezra doing a pretty good impression of the crawler captain. Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty good. And the crawler captain then kind of in turns does a pretty good <laughs> impression of Ezra. They even say he pulls an <laughs> Ezra when he escapes out of the closet via the vents. Although Ezra is not too happy when he has to go in there himself. Yeah. He's like, I'm older. Mm. I mean, this happens. <laughs> I think this happens back in the pilot where they put Ezra in a closet and then they open the door and he's gone through the vents. The ghost. Yes. <laughs> Things are coming together. 
just as Kanan said, oh my gosh, I've made the connection. No, you haven't. I have made the connection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kanan, we love you. We also have Mart Matten returning. The former leader of the Iron Squadron has learned to play nice with others and is a part of the Phoenix Attacks Force as Phoenix 2. The droid who gives his life for Mart mm, <laughs> is the same one from Iron Squadron R3A3. His buddy. Like this, this droid has been with buddy. him forever. Yeah. Pour one out. You gave mm -hmm. you gave parts to Chopper. Yeah. Next up, we lock S foils in attack position. So in addition to this line from Hera, the space battle here uses a lot of really classic Star Wars space battle elements. The X-Wings mm -hmm. are modeled after the original kind of Kenner Toys version from the mm -hmm. 70s and the sound effects of the TIE targeting system. It's all it's very cool. We haven't actually seen that many space battles like this in Rebels. We've seen a lot of fights with the ghost, but not not a lot of these fighter on fighter type battles. Right. The dog fights. It's so cool. The, seeing an X-Wing is always cool. Yeah. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Chopper rescuing Hera. So cute. We don't get to see it on screen, but we've heard the story about how Chopper was pulled from his Y-Wing by Hera when they were, when they, both of them were younger. They were younger. Hera was much younger. Here we see the inverse happen when he's able to do the same for her. When he like knocks on the window and then he pops the thing, <laughs> grabs her out like, uh. I love it so much. They're so good together. They really are. All right. Well, before we move into our next holocron, we're going to take a quick break to hear from this week's sponsor. Do you need a freelancer to help you with your website? Either a designer, maybe you need someone to help write an expert article or blogs for your website, or you just need a presentation designer to help with the next big work project. Look no further than the number one freelance marketplace, Fiverr. You can find designers, programmers, and more within seconds, some for as low as just five bucks a gig. Fiverr is the ideal tool to help you with your pressing projects. Just post your gig or search for some freelancers and you're off. Don't deal with the hassle of finding freelancers by yourself. Let Fiverr help you. See the link in our show notes to get started. Note Bohemian Geek Studies is an affiliate partner of Fiverr. We may receive commissions on purchases and services you buy after you click the link. These commissions help support the growth of BGS and we appreciate your continued support. All right, everyone, we are heading into our fifth holocron, the newbie from Naboo. This is Flo's first time watching Rebels, her first time meeting a certain assassin. Why? Yeah. So we've tasked her with watching the episodes, giving us her questions and her takes. So let's find out what our amb ambassador for Naboo thought about today's episode, starting with Kindred. Yeah, three episodes today. It was a busy three. night for me last night taking notes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least um, you've okay. been watching at school. I was not, I was not watching at school, mostly because you texted earlier in the week and was like, you were like three episodes. And I was like, there's no way I can fit that at school. So I'm going to have to watch this on my downtime at home. <laughs> okay. So let's kick it off with episode seven. First of all, we kick it off with Kanan and Hera. So like you already know, it's going to be a good episode. Literally all I wrote was Kanan plus Hera. And then I put a heart next to it. Like they're getting ready for this mission that they're going on. They're like kind of it's like kind of a solemn time for them. Like you can tell they like don't want to be apart and it's, it's very sad. Anyways, Caden starts going off about fate and about like how he feels like they've been pulled to Lethal. They were pulled to Ezra, but that they were here even before Ezra. And he's like being really weird about it. Obviously, like we see later, that there's like a lot more weirdness and I'm going to get into some like prediction that I have. Um, cause I feel weird. So I'm going to go into my weird feelings in a second. Okay. Okay. Thrawn's eyes. Can we talk about those for a second? Cause those are really weird. They're even scarier on those, like, on those like hollow Holog things, holograms. whatever, yeah. <laughs> where they like project them. He looks so creepy on those. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, I'm not here for it. Then he's like, Oh yeah, by the way, Price, who's the grossest person ever, yes. I called in this assassin guy. His name is Rukh. <laughs> 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 and immediately I was like, oh, this bro's Jewish. Okay, got it. Like, 
funnily enough <laughs> enough of it finally we get one jew and he's like the creepiest person ever so thank you star wars creators um yeah every time they said rook or Rook or whatever they were saying. It sounded like Ruach to me, which is like a word that we say a lot in Judaism. It means like spirit. This guy has no spirit. This guy's the worst. F this guy. And it sucks because in the books, he's really cool. <laughs> oh, is he? Mm -hmm. I legends. feel like he's really good at what he's doing. Like he's good at like sniffing out people. Obviously, like he literally gets off the ship and he's like, oh, Lassat, let's go get him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except like in a creepy, not human way. Um, or maybe so just that smells he... really bad. I don't know. Well, I mean, that's also More probably evidence. true. <laughs> Although Ezra is the teenage boy in this. I feel like Ezra probably doesn't yeah. smell too good either. Mm -hmm. um, we get a lot of Loth cats. Ezra is obsessed with the Loth cats. And obviously it pays off every time. Literally, he's like, follow the Loth cat. Oh, look, there's our hyperdrive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Easy. Um, there were some pod racing vibes in this episode. When there was like the little speeder chase, it felt very pod race. Like it felt very Phantom Menace. I don't know if it was just like the kind of deserty landscape with the like weird mm. mountain formations, but I felt like I was watching an animated version of Phantom Menace and I liked it. Like I liked the pod racing. I thought it was fun and I thought it went off just like long enough. Yes, not too long, George. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear us, George? Not too long. Dave understands. Yeah. Dave Filoni understands. He's like, okay, we'll trim this. Let's edit. Let's do it. Okay. We see Kanan. And Kanan in these episodes, like I was saying, is sadder. Like he is kind of expressing that he wants like a simpler life. Like he kind of wants to be done. Like yeah. he mm -hmm. wants to kind of walk away from this and just like, be with Hera and leave this behind. Yeah. And in this moment, he says to Hera, because she's like, I've never really thought about what happens after the war. Like this mm -hmm. has been, you know, ongoing for so, so long that this is just who I am basically. And so then he says, guess you've never really thought about us. And I'm just like, oh, Ooh. shit. <laughs> Kanan asking the big questions. Yeah. Here. And I feel like he asked it with like, there was sadness in his voice for sure, but he was also just like resigned where he's just like, okay, like, mm. like this is what it's like. Okay. So then they're about to kiss, right? <laughs> like they're about to. And this fucker, I don't even know who it was. I swear to God, if they had gone interrupted one more time, my TV would be outside of my home broken. It like, was Ryder. <laughs> Fuck it. Shut up. No, it was wasn't. favorite. Fuck that. The only way that could have been worse is if Bendu had interrupted. <laughs> fuck. Fuck you, Ryder. Fuck you. Oh my God. That's so funny. I was like so entranced by the kiss that didn't happen that I totally blanked out because I was writing my note. My <laughs> note is literally in all caps interrupt their kiss one more time. That's literally what it says. So I didn't even see that it was Ryder. Anyways um moving on from that it was pretty obvious that Ezra Speeder got tracked like that was I don't even know why he was thinking it wasn't that was like the least safe thing he ever did was to bring his speeder back to base like what are you doing mm -hmm. like check your shit in the middle of nowhere before you go back to base what are we doing anyways Price is the mm -hmm. smuggest bitch in the whole world mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. I feel okay. like the emperor's hand is just like so far up her ass. It's unbelievable. She's a pain and I hate her. Mm -hmm. She's also getting scared now though. Like if Thrawn is like, you're not doing your job, I'm sending in my own people. That's not a good sign. Mm -mm. No, it's not. But she still seems to be such a bitch about it. And also she like doesn't listen to Thrawn. Like maybe no. if she was actually paying more attention, like she would do better. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would do better if they listened to Thrawn. <laughs> totally. Totally. Okay. And then, like, I don't even know how we got to this point. But we get to the pinnacle of all of society. 
Hera is about to leave, right? She's, mm-hmm. she's going to take off. She is going to be the one to go relay this information about the elite, right? Is that what they're called? The, the tire, defender the elite. Tire defender. Okay, yeah. perfect. Mm-hmm. She's going to go take this to fucking Mon Mothma. <laughs> Don't even get me started. I'm going to go into that later. <laughs> so she's going by herself with, with Chop. Yeah. And we get, we get the goodbye scene. And fucking finally, after so much anticipation, Kanan and Hera kiss, and it's everything I've ever wanted. It was so good. And then to make it even better, so they kiss, right? So it's like, Mwah. okay, whatever. And then their foreheads just like lay on each other, mm-hmm. and I wanted to combust. It was amazing. It's it was so everything. Good. It was so romantic. Also, like, there is a surprising lack, like lack of height difference between them because they fit like so perfectly. And also like, I really like that because like Sabine is pretty tiny, Mm -hmm. but Hera like is really like tall and like statuesque and like just really like commands a room and has such a presence about her. Mm -hmm. I just really like that they didn't make her tiny compared to Kanan. Like, I just love that. Mm -hmm. So anyways, it was amazing. And Kane right? is tall. He's like 6'3". Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, she's got to be at least six feet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, there was barely any difference between them. Mm-hmm. It was so great. Um, so here's what I wrote. It's that all caps, kiss OMG, double exclamation point. <laughs> OMG and the foreheads is what it says. Yes. And then I wrote, if they touch one hair on Kanan or Hera, exclamation point. I'm going to get into that in a, in a sec. <laughs> Um, when they were following the wolves, Mm -hmm. that kind of reminded me of, and obviously like this came first, right? This came before like the, the, the sequel trilogy. Mm -hmm. Uh, technically, yes. Except for maybe Force Awakens. Yeah. Force Awakens and Rogue One. Uh, I can double check, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's before the moment you're about to, to reference. (laughs) Okay, well, it just, like, really reminded me of the crystal foxes. Yeah, the vulpix. Like, yeah, exactly, the vulpixes. <laughs> um, it was, yeah, it was a little bit, like, too similar. And so I'm kind of annoyed that that was... Damn you, Ryan like, Johnson, stealing Dave Filoni's shit. <laughs> and it was even, like, the same kind of coloring. Like, mm-hmm. very, like, pale animals. Obviously, like, theirs was more, like, snowy, sandy sort of looking. This was obviously sand. Um, I don't know. It was just, I was like, oh, I've already seen this. Like, um, I will say one thing for Ryder. He had a quote in this that was like, this is what everybody was thinking. And he says, how have you people stayed alive so long? (laughs) And it's like, yeah, how, how is everyone not deceased? Yeah. The force is with them. (laughs) Yes. So just for a quick, just for a quick reference, this episode aired November 6th, 2017. Okay. And Last Jedi came out December 15th, 2017. So it was actually only about a month before. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Also, like, we're almost to the day, like, recording this for Very true. release day. <laughs> almost four years to the day. Dang. So that's crazy. wild. It's only been four years since Last Jedi. That's wild. <laughs> that feels like it's that been so much longer. Really, really weird. Oh, man. Okay, so now we're in these like mountainy cave things in Lothal. We are following wolves because Ezra says so. Um, we are escaping the Empire who has found our base, like our little camp. And I'm going to need you all to walk me through this because so Ezra has been just like dropping some acid is what I'm assuming. <laughs> He and the wolf, like, were just tripping balls, like, looking at each other, and then, like, things swirled, and then there was space, and then there was blue, and then, like, all of a sudden, okay, here's my notes. I'm just going to read them, because I, I have no idea what happened. I wrote, what? Acid trip. Then the force theme swelled, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. I said, and I don't even know if this is right, they moved through the planet. Did they move through the planet? Because they, they so, ended up on the other side, right? I don't, 
Yes, they're in the southern hemisphere now. So they like cross the equator, <laughs> basically. I mean, this feel is this is probably a spoiler, right? Not it's necessarily. Okay. They don't really talk about it specifically. Wait, shut I, up. I'm sorry. Hold on. Shut up. They don't say anything about this. I mean, they do, but they don't like really specify what it it. I always call it force walking. Yeah. And it is a little bit of a spoiler. What is happening? Okay. Where, where they go through. Okay. It should look a little familiar to you. A little, a little. A tiny <laughs> bit. I also kind of, I always kind of think of it almost as like, it's like a force powered version because when, when they're going and you kind of see that light reflected in Ezra's eyes, to me, that mm-hmm. very much looks like when you're jumping to hyperspace, how the stars kind of streak. So I think of it almost like like a force version of hyper hyper travel. If that and makes it sense. It's like Ezra's eyes when he's looking at the Virgo. Okay. Who can use hyperspace? Travel. And yeah. like everybody else, just like side along apparitioned with him. Kind of. Yep. That's the weirdest shit I've ever it's, seen. It's in Star Wars. new force abilities that we haven't really gotten into yet. Mm-hmm. Very specific to Ezra, the, the Loth Wolves. Interesting. And but is it the of, wolf doing it, or is it Ezra doing it? It's the wolf. The wolf. Kind of, it, <laughs> it the they're wolf. kind of like it's almost like underlying their connection to the planet. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I like didn't get it at all. I was just like, okay, obviously this is like some weird apparition and like he like crossed yeah. through a wormhole or something. I don't know. Kind of. Um, but yeah, it was there's weird. stargates in the middle of Lethal. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of yeah. what I figured. Yeah. Exactly. Kind of like a stargate. <laughs> and then this wolf like just keeps going doom. And I was like, so I wrote it down and they explained it literally right after. Mm-hmm. So says doom. Apparently that's Kanan's last name. Yeah. Um, Caleb doom. And then they kind of left it at that. They're just like, oh, yeah, that's my name. Oh, uh, you want to expand on that, bro? Like, why is the wolf saying your name? Okay. We do not want to expand on that yet. Yeah, no, I figured. <laughs> yeah, I figured. <laughs> um, so we get that. It's like literally just like dropped in from nowhere. Um, I did love the part near the end of the episode where they're like, Hera's, Hera's okay, like, She's she's okay. And Kanan just like trusts her so implicitly. He's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, no, she definitely she made it. Like it's it's not even like a doubt in his mind. He's just like, absolutely, she's fine. Mm-hmm. And then of course, like we see Hera, she gets to where she was supposed to go. We see Mon Mothma, we see um Organa, and it's just like, God, I fucking hate you, Mon Mothma. As soon as her fucking face showed up on my screen, I was like, you fucking middle of the road fucking democrat i hate you i can't i cannot with her the face of the rebellion (laughs) oh oh does she have to be yeah so anyways that was the end of that episode i actually really enjoyed this episode i thought a lot happened Mm -hmm. um obviously like there was a kiss so it goes to the top of my charts i do want to i do want to point out that before we started recording i noted that this episode probably had one of flo's favorite moments and her response was you mean the, the part where I jumped off my couch? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. It was so, okay. Here, I knew a kiss was coming. Okay. Because many, many, many moons ago, I was tooling around with um, doing art on my phone. Art mm-hmm. is really a tough word for it. Basically just like copying shit on my phone. Anyways, Colleen was like, you have to do Hera and Kanan. And I was like, I don't even know who the fuck that is, but okay, that's fine. (laughs) And she had, or she had told me this and I had found a picture of the scene of them kissing. And so like, you know, at that time, like it looked like it was from Canon to me, but I don't know like what's fan art and what's not because I didn't know shit. And then as soon as like they, as soon as it happened, I was like, there it is. I've seen this before. It was so good. I might be able to find it on my phone really quick. I mean, it's on our Instagram if you want to check it out from like, way back when so Mm -hmm. um yeah such such good shit yes friends here it is i can put it oh yeah there it is yeah there's uh there it is if you're looking on youtube you'll be able to see that's right and if you're not you should get onto our instagram and check it out Mm -hmm. um okay so that was 
probably my favorite episode of the three. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that one takes top spot. Now we're going to talk about my least favorite of the three, mm-hmm. which is episode eight, Crawler Commandeers. Mm-hmm. Nautical term. Uh, <laughs> every time somebody says commandeer, I'm like, nautical term. Um, okay, so we're wandering through Lethal. Everything is fucked. Like everything is burnt and like fucking the worst. We see this thing, they call it an ore crawler. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like it's mining something. And it turns out, yes, it's the mining guild um, who is mining Always. shit. Um, and honestly, like I was so uninterested in this episode. It was honestly unbelievable. The main parts where I was paying a lot of attention was the Hera parts. So Hera is with Organa, with Mon Mothma, and they're kind of like brushing her off. Mm-hmm. And she pushes back, like in a way that we haven't seen as much in terms of her pushing back against that leadership. We've seen yes. Ezra be like a little tool bag, um, but Hera has usually been like pretty like measured. Mm-hmm. And here she's like, no. So here's what my note says. I said, yeah, Hera, push back on Organa. Then Mon Mothma was like, being a bitch. And <laughs> <laughs> I can't. So my note says, perhaps it's best, because I think she said something like, perhaps it's best that blah, 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 blah. And I wrote, perhaps it's best I shove my foot up your ass, Mon <laughs> She just like really pisses me off. Just like her whole demeanor. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, like you're gonna love this part. <laughs> uh, it's I think my issue. Okay, here's my issue with her. I think my issue is she never seems to have a sense of urgency. And mm-hmm. I like live a lot of my life with some sort of sense of urgency because like I have to because I take care of young children and like everything is kind of pressing. It's just like I don't know that she realizes that people are suffering on the ground yeah like I think everything that she sees is so like like lofty and just like like kind of theoretical and it's like have some urgency people are dying like go do something Mm -hmm. anyway she pisses me off um (laughs) okay so the mining guild is like these weird lizard people (laughs) transitions (laughs) sure um and they uh, they obviously commandeer this ore crawler Mm -hmm. um then Ezra has to pretend like he is the like boss man Mm -hmm. and he like begins to basically speak in parcel tongue (laughs) I'm just like what are you what is happening it was Ezra needs to stop (laughs) The only one like who's every decent time, at impressions. <laughs> Ezra thinks that he can do voices, and it's like you can, no, you're not fooling anyone, Ezra Bridger. Please just stop. Like, just shoot the thing. Like, pull the Han Solo and just shoot the communication thing. It's like be done with it because like it's not gonna work. Yeah, Visago did a way better job. <laughs> Visago yeah. did. We're, okay, my next note says fucking Visago because that's when we see Visago, and I'm like, how is this guy here again? I can't. <laughs> yeah. They shipped um, him off to be a slave. Honestly, the fucking worst. Oh, yeah. um, but he does do a better job, although he also fails, so whatever. Um, he I doesn't have the information. <laughs> They're like, what well, are your codes? Fair. And he doesn't have them. <laughs> yeah, like, but I feel like you just make something up. You're like, well, our code is 7-9-R-T-Z. Like... <laughs> I don't know just say something did you just give away your license plate or something yeah that was it you should track it it's one a, two three it's a four, chevy five. bolt uh, <laughs> says one's up on the back <laughs> um okay i did really like the whips that they were using obviously yeah, i do cool. not condone the use of whips on anybody specifically not people or slaves but they looked sick yeah they looked like they looked really cool on screen. Okay, <laughs> this next note just says the snake people are really resilient. <laughs> yes, like, why are they really so tough. good? They're really tough and really strong. Yeah, they were super tough. That guy who was just like in the closet, like he the just captain. kept fighting. Yeah, he kept going. There was no stopping him. No. He was wild. 
they are kind of the they're kind of the Star Wars equivalent of like the um the Predator alien. Yeah. <laughs> I have not seen that, but yeah. No, well, the thing that almost kills Arnold Schwarzenegger and is a hunter. Get to the chopper. Okay. Get to the chopper. Get to the crawler. That movie that's from? I yes. didn't even know. Get to the, get to the oh. crawler. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Um, okay, obviously I enjoy freeing slaves. That was great. Mm-hmm. I there is something about rebels that is very funny to me as somebody who has played video games. I just like some of the background characters, it's like you are such a cutscene background character where they just like have their arms and they go like, yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's Different like the animation on that nice, was rough, but, team. Yeah. It was rough. <laughs> Yeah, the, the budget was not in this episode, except for the whips. Yeah, they spent all the money on the whips. That was it. Um, <laughs> I just, I laughed so hard. I was like, that is very funny. Um, okay, Hera crashes the meeting. Um, Organa's having a closed door meeting and she's like, well, bam. She basically like kicks down the door and like gives this great speech about like just doing it. And it was, it was awesome. So mm-hmm. loved her. All right, my next note is going to be controversial because we know how I feel about Visago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to read it. Visago is kind of ripped. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He is, though. Like, he looks good. (laughs) So then I went on, like a village person in his uniform. (laughs) He looked (laughs) like he was about to sing YMCA. Did he or did he not? Somebody tell me I'm wrong. Did he not look like a village people person? <laughs> he did. <laughs> I've killed Anders. He's, he's deceased. <laughs> right I am right. right. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm right. I, I say meme it. Meme it, Anders. We need you. I mean, he looked like he was wearing a construction workers outfit, right? Yeah. Like, yes, he, he was like in day glow. But damn, like Visago, you'd be working out. Boy, he's cut. <laughs> he's cut. He, is. <laughs> he is cut. So I will, I can appreciate that just as much as the next person. <laughs> we got a lot of our friend Zeb in this, mm-hmm. um, which I really appreciate because, huh? Finally. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It, like we just hadn't seen him in so many episodes and he had taken such a back seat. And so he was like really front and center yeah. in a lot of these, which was really great. Um, he goes against Seabor, who is the, the creepy dude who is in the uh, closet. Seabor mm-hmm. um, is creepy, especially when he's like crawling under the bridge. It was just, he's a freak. However, like his death was pretty anticlimactic. He gets shoved into the... <laughs> I know, but like, it was like the second after he was like, whoa, it whatever it was I was I was kind of annoyed by that I just felt really quick mm-hmm. it was like yeah. yes we just we just saw it like okay um <laughs> then of course the poorly animated background people become rebel recruits yay great um and the most exciting part is the rebel command authorizes the attack on Laval well not on on the empire on Laval yeah. Um, did not like this episode. This episode was like a two. Um, this one is like one of the only like kind of fillery episodes in season four. Okay, that's like good I, to know. I know why they did it because they need the crawler, like they needed a new base. Got it. But when yeah. you're more interested in the B plot, which is Hera, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really same. only giving it a two because of Hera and because of the whip, mm-hmm. and maybe because of Vizago's abs and arms. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Fuck around and find out. Uh, (laughs) Okay. And that takes us to our last episode for today. Episode nine, Salt. This clearly like pitted or an episode where we pit Hera against Thrawn again. And we do this over and over and over again because really Hera is probably the only one smart enough in our crew to take on Thrawn. She's the only one who's good enough. So she's leading an air assault. Um, the rest of them are on the ground. She's with Chop. 
Thrawn has like seen this coming because Thrawn sees everything coming. I don't know what that man is doing, but he knows everything. <laughs> did I miss something? But did Hera get promoted? Because they, they start captain? calling her general. Oh, yeah. Oh, then, then she yeah. Got her promotion. Because she, she was got... captain, right? Yeah. There was, and... I believe it's, is it Rogue One where they're calling for General Syndulla all yeah. over the loudspeakers oh. mm -hmm. as like an Easter egg? So, yeah. So, by that point, okay. at least she's a general. So, I mean, they keep, well, the rebels call her general in this episode. Thrawn still refers to her as captain. Right. So, I'm assuming word has not reached Thrawn. So, he doesn't, I, I guess, know everything. Um, we get a space battle, um, which, as we've talked about before, those deaths are my least favorite. Like, mm -hmm. the girl who she's talking to in the other um, X-Wing goes down. I hate it. I hate everything about it. Um, that's like, I, yeah, I don't want to go that way. Don't put me in an X-Wing and then shoot me down. Um, I have a thing about the Empire. Okay. Everybody in the Empire is weirdly bad at following directions. <laughs> and like, when you're a space Nazi, like, I feel like the Nazis were notorious for knowing how to follow directions and just like following them. Like, that feels like a lot of what the Nuremberg trials were about. Just like, we just followed orders. Listen, yeah. Yeah. But the Empire is horrible at following orders. I feel like everybody like gets orders and they're like, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that. So then like Thrawn had to shoot his own guy down. Mm -hmm. It was just like, yeah, I don't really understand. Um, but I guess like nobody's force choking them right now. So maybe like the incentive isn't there. Well, I they think don't it's... believe in Thrawn either. They're like, he's an alien. Like, mm. yeah, they're a little, they're prejudiced against Thrawn. And they're also, I feel like they were Glory a lot better. Bones. This is something that I've, I think I've talked about before. Like it, during the original trilogy, they were actually pretty darn good about following orders. Yeah. And I was always really surprised that there were, in a government that is kind of as corrupt and as evil as the empire, one of the tropes is to always have people kind of backstabbing each other and trying to set someone up to fail. And they're mm -hmm. exp they expand on that a lot more in places like this and some of the books. Yeah. You get kind of, you know, characters like Krennic. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm. The political yeah. movers. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's just in comparison to the original trilogy where they are very like, nazis following orders this is very like no i'm gonna do it for my own glory sort right. of situation yeah. Yeah. um but anyways that it does not work out well for them um our girl Hera, she thinks like 16 steps ahead she is the queen of setting off chain reaction explosions mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. she is amazing i don't know how she thinks that far ahead i i do not possess that talent um she's incredible there were a lot of tie fighters in that ambush mm -hmm. that was amazing i thought that shot yeah, was incredible uh, it was it was wild i love that my next note says if Hera is injured i swear and then of course she is injured she's like holding her arm she has like crash landed in the city um and it's just like it's bad shit i wrote that i how much i hate that rock guy rook <laughs> guy ruach yeah. guy yeah hate him also i think in this episode we really see how tiny he is he's about yes. the size of a jawa or an ewok like he he's is small. so tiny they're like murder like murder creatures though these thing his species is like oh i mean it's obvious yeah. like he's vicious mm -hmm. but like <laughs> i feel like in that first episode where we saw him we didn't really see him in relation to anybody else or like he was right. kind of in the distance but here we see him next to i think price Mm -hmm. and he's, he's like half of her body yeah it was i just uh, it was weird it's like golem <laughs> yeah <-sized>. yes <laughs> he's very and he's very golem e period just yeah. like weird um at this point kanan is frantic like this is really the only time i've really seen kanan this frantic yeah. he's just like we have to get to Hera. like at nothing else matters really he like ends up turning around on like the super speed highway that apparently leads out of the city um and he just turns around um chop is also injured mm. fucking horrible or poor bean they mm. end up like ripping off the antenna from another <laughs> from another yeah. droid to fix him <laughs> kanan is just the best in this he's like trying to be such a hero he like really wants to go help her 
Um, go through the city. This guy, sign him up yeah. for Cirque du Soleil. That guy is like flipping through the air. Like it is a nothing. He's like climbing the walls, like put him on some aerial silks. <laughs> He'll be incredible. Yes. It was crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, Hera gets into hand-to-hand combat with him and she fucking held her own. Like she was, she yeah. was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, Chop saves the day. He zaps <laughs> with all, all the best of them. Then like, there's all these wolves around, like around Canaan. Oh, I feel like this episode, yeah. I had a super hard time paying attention to where everybody was because there was a mm-hmm. lot going on. Yeah, very busy. Yeah, so then Canaan's on super speed highway. These wolves come. We're all like very worried about Hera. So it's like, please just stay with Hera. Like, I, I want to know that Hera is going to be okay. I don't actually care about Kanan right now. Like Kanan's fine. Um, yeah. These wolves all come and he's like, what do you want? And there's like a bunch of wolves. Mm-hmm. And then like, I don't really know what happened. Doom. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. They're, I got that. Thank you. Yeah. They're having <laughs> a force moment. Like this is definitely a force connection. But we moment. like, we don't see anything like he, we don't know if he goes with them right like what is, he's just like staring at them okay yeah okay <laughs> and then <laughs> fine <laughs> whatever uh and then price ends up capturing her yeah. and that's mm-hmm. how we end the episode um i did not look ahead i saw only that the next episode had the word jedi in it Yes. I think yes. um, just because Disney plus obviously like after yeah. the credits goes whatever to the next title like, screen thingy. I'm going to float my prediction. Okay. Okay. And keep in mind, I do not want this to happen. Okay. I am very worried in star Wars when good things are happening for people that we love okay anakin and padme padme's pregnant they're married it's beautiful we're so thrilled um <laughs> we are thrilled okay bitch i was we happy for them because we're he did thrilled love her. for them <laughs> um they're gonna live their truth somehow she's gonna make a beautiful mm. nursery in naboo it's gonna be stunning anders you're not invited okay <laughs> she's not inviting you to the baby shower and then, of course, Anakin, tur- like, immediately turns to the dark side. Padme dies. The twins are orphans. orphans. Um, we get, we, you know, we get Jin finally happy. No, she's got to die. Um, <laughs> we get Ray finally happy with Kylo. No, he's got to, we hey. don't get happy. <laughs> dies. They would have hey, been happy, I think. They would have been happy, Anders. They would have yeah. been beautiful. Uh-huh. After they went through his war crimes trial. Yeah. yeah. It would have been fine. She would have forgiven it. Padme would have forgiven Anakin. So. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think that's a problem. Well, it is a it problem. It is a problem. This is Star Wars. <laughs> this is, okay, this Once is a again, problem, Once again, the Anders. war crimes trial would happen. <laughs> It's called Star Wars. It's not called Star Peace with no war crimes. Like they've all committed war crimes. Even like, Luke, he killed two million people. Um, Wait, more yeah. on the Death also Star. like <laughs> Sabine and the rest of them blew up like seventeen guard towers in this episode, <laughs> or like two episodes ago. Like they killed tons of people. Anyway, I'm not concerned about that. This is all to say that I don't believe in happiness in this universe. So when they give me Hera and Kanan kissing, while I'm thrilled. The alarm bells start going off in my head. Red flags. <laughs> yeah, very, very red flags. So with no, without any more ado, I think that Kanan is going to die. And I'm very nervous about it. Do not, I'm just going to block your faces so I don't see you. Um, okay. I'm extremely concerned about it. I don't see a, okay, it's either going to be Kanan or Hera. But I don't think they're going to kill Hera because I just don't think they're going to kill Hera. So I think they're going to kill Kanan, which sucks because the man's already blind. Like, <laughs> you can only give him so many things, okay? 
he can't be blind and dead that's bullshit (laughs) but like I worry about this wolf thing and like his past and I just feel like there's gonna be some like big transcendent moment where he's like let me tell you about my past Ezra and then like shabam he's dead he and Hera don't get to live out this life that she never thought about because she never thought about them and life after the war because there will be no life after the war I really think Kanan is not making it through this season and I'm concerned okay so there you go that's that's my take no spoilers (laughs) my other take I mean is more of a hope I hope that Ezra and Sabine finally fuck (laughs) <laughs> uh, I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> so I'll save that for the fanfics. Oh my god! <laughs> so that's it. That that's my take on these episodes. That's my hypothesis for what's coming up. Okay. Obviously, like whenever there's an episode with Jedi in the title, I'm concerned. We only have two, unless it's Anakin, I guess, um, or Ahsoka, who's not really a Jedi, um, or Grogu, who's just like hidden somewhere. Hidden for forever, by the way. Grogu is baby Grogu. Where is Ahsoka? Is somewhere. We can't tell you where Ahsoka is. Yeah, no Shut spoilers. the fuck up right now. <laughs> yeah, no, we can't tell Oh you. my fucking God. I mean, You're going to tell me some dumbass shit like Ahsoka's the fucking wolf. Oh my no. God. They're like Ahsoka is Bendu. No. Oh God. <laughs> they are their own separate things. Wait, I haven't even like thought about Ahsoka in like 12 years. I know, um, right? Everything in Rebels comes back. Too? Oh fuck! <laughs> oh my god, she's like yeah. she's probably like herding the pigs with like pig man as <laughs> Oh god, she's with Lando. She's like fucking on capes with Lando. Oh god, I love it. All right, oh, I don't know. Kanan does say that the wolves are more sentient than other creatures, so remember that. Like they are more aware. They're more like humans or other sentient beings. Oh my god, it is Ahsoka, isn't it? This is the fucking worst. I hate you people. <laughs> the wolves are not Ahsoka. I can je- okay. definitely Yes, I can that. spoil that for you. The wolves are not Ahsoka. Well, okay, so at first, I thought Ezra was the wolves. Like, I thought he was, like, warging into the wolf. I was very confused with this, like, light eyes swirl galaxy yes. thing going on. Whatever. Well, he, he did that with the Purgle, with the... Right. The King Purgle. So he, it's his connection with animals that's really coming out now. But he wasn't the wolf in this one. No. no. Okay. The wolf they is just, its own wolf. <laughs> the wolf is its own wolf. Is its wolf. Own okay, wolf. the wolf is not Ahsoka and not Ezra. All right, no. noted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, I think we're going to move oh into our sixth holocron, the conjecture at the cantina. This is where we mm-hmm. ask our own questions about the episodes, explore some wider mm-hmm. Star Wars lore together. So Colleen, you want to start us off? Yes. Okay. So what did Dave Filoni and crew have to say about these episodes? A lot of the chatting on Rebels Recon for these episodes had to do with Rook <laughs> and why they brought him into canon. Filoni mentioned that once you have Thrawn, a lot of other dominoes kind of start to fall and they wanted to bring in another non-force user character. Mm. So they picked Rook. He's voiced by Warwick Davis, which I love, <laughs> which is fantastic. Shut up right now. Yeah, he's yeah. voiced by Warwick Davis, a uh, very much a Star Wars veteran, and they used a lot of his physical performance while he was doing the voice recording for Rook. Wow. <laughs> he apparently is very animated when he does vocal recordings, so they used him as a template. Wow, that's amazing. It's like, get after it, Warwick. That's amazing. Yes. They also talked a lot about Kanan and Hera's relationship, the fact that they've been involved with each other in the past. After reading the book New Dawn, we really want to see the years between the book and Rebels. Yeah. Because Kanan in that novel was a fuckboy. Like, he was a hard drinking (laughs) fuckboy. Yeah, Kanan lived above a bar and basically went down, Mm -hmm. got drunk, and tried to pick up chicks every night. Yes. Man. As Kanan or as Caleb? Kanan. He changes his name in the comics when he's still very young. Got it. To Kanan. Those are also excellent, everyone. Read the Kanan comics. Devastating. Okay. Amazing. Fantastic. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I really want to know how the hell he talked his way into a romantic relationship with Hera. Because <laughs> at the end of New Dawn, they're like partnered up, but not partnered up. Well, maybe he's there wasn't much like... talking, if you know what I mean. <laughs> She basically is like, yeah, I guess you can come with me. Yeah. <laughs> I 
it's it's very funny come um, with me if you know yeah, what i mean exactly. <laughs> i'm guessing they were involved with each other fairly early on like when they were much younger before the rebellion was really getting into stuff i mean how could they not be like how can you be around Kanan and not be like yes please yeah oh yeah for sure and yeah. i think they're still like having like stress relief moments all throughout rebels <laughs> They might not be like in a relationship relationship, but they're in a relationship. <laughs> hey, how about you guys um, go get some uh, Malu runs or whatever, and we'll just be here. Bye. Sabine, go to, just leave. Yeah, the Chopper's Sabine, like, can I you... please leave too? <laughs> yeah. No way, Chopper wants, to be in, Chopper wants to be involved. Well, that's fair. Chopper's filming. He's uh he's keeping it for posterity's sake. He does totally cock block them in one of the shorts. Oh, there's oh, four yeah. rebel shorts after we're done with the series. They're like like five minutes long, maybe. And he totally cock blocks mm. them when they're trying to kiss. Mm-hmm. Um also Mart Matten is in these up ep- or is in the last episode, but where were Goody and Johnner, his buddies from Iron Squadron? Dave Filoni was like, uh, they're back on Yavin. <laughs> Yep. So they're with the rebellion. They're just not in this episode. He's like, we didn't really want to shoot them down. So mm. let's not do that. And then Andy Gutierrez, who is the host of Rolls Recon, even asked one of those dreaded questions Who is the better pilot, Hera or Poe? Everyone she asked said Hera. <laughs> they're like, no, it's Hera. Hera's definitely the better pilot. I mean, she's well, amazing, she's fantastic. The great debate is always her or Han Solo, and I'm like Hera. I think it's Hera. It's yeah, Hera. Han is very good. Like he's he's up there. He's definitely up there with the best Star Wars pilots. But Hera is like next level good. I wonder like who would be better, Hera or Anakin? Because Anakin's got the Force going for him. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I feel like. That, that doesn't feel fair. It's not like a fair comparison. Right. It's like cheating. It's yeah. kind of like people compare Wedge and Luke. And oh, no, you can't do that. Even Luke is like, I'm only better than you because I have the force. And Wedge is also, like, I know. Wedge is way hotter, so. <laughs> yes, this is a pro we stand Wedge. Yes. Podcast. <laughs> yeah, they do. We're going to make shirts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wedge, you have my whole heart. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Well, speaking of hearts, now getting back to Flo's new love interest, Visago. (laughs) Fuck you. I'm I'm curious about this, though, because he does actually, I mean, obviously he's happy to be freed from being a slave, but he does seem to have like actual genuine affection in his voice when he says that they're his friends. And he's got, he's this pirate character. He's like kind of come close to selling them out a few times. (laughs) He's always kind of trying to talk to me out. But he, it seems like he has genuine like gratitude and affection for the rebels. So do we think that that's genuine or is he putting on a show? No. I he's think full he's of a lot shit. like Hondo. I was about to say the same thing. Well, Colleen like, took the words think... out of my mouth. He'll say whatever he's got to say. I if think he, he does can benefit them. him, no he's spoilers. there. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> he and Hondo are very like, I think that for a character like this, this is about as genuine in affection as they can get Mm -hmm. i think he does appreciate that they're there for him and he thinks that they're there yeah (laughs) he's like oh shit i was right i've been bragging about you this whole time and now i won some bets like yay i get more prison rations than (laughs) wow but yeah Yeah, I, I, i think he's full of shit he's definitely one of those characters who after you rescue him is going to be like all right i'm out Okay. But then you're gonna pick him up, pick him up again later. Yeah. It's like a bad penny. He always turns back up. Yeah. Okay. So my next question, Ezra notes that the cave paintings on the southern hemisphere mm-hmm. seem a lot like the ones that he saw in the Jedi Temple up on the Thal. So when we talked about the Jedi Temple before, mm-hmm. I I noted how the rock formations seemed to be there already, and the temple was kind of built into this existing formation. But does this kind of suggest to us that the temple itself, the actual structure of the interior of the temple, predated the Jedi being there? Did they kind of move into an existing an existing structure? What do you guys think? It could be like the pyramids on Yavin. 
where they came in and took over a pre-existing structure. Mm -hmm. I think it definitely could be that. And they inter they obviously integrated yeah. some of their own tech in. Sure. But I mean, I, like I like in, that. I think like, yeah, I like that a lot. I feel like that feels kind of like respectful to the history of the planet mm -hmm. to like not just build something up from scratch, but rather like retrofit something that's already there and like part of the part of the scenery. Right. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of the Jedi doing that. I, I didn't really think about it. I honestly, again, I didn't really get that entire part. So I was like, I have yeah. no idea what's going on. <laughs> it will become clear later. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, sure. It'll, it'll oh, I'm sure. Clear later. Yes. All right. And then last question concerns timeline. Again, mm -hmm. Flo's favorite, Mon Mothma, mentions, <laughs> mentions that the Empire invoked Protocol 13, the complete evacuation of one of their occupied worlds. It's never actually confirmed Colleen, is that Jetta? I think it is. Is that it, oh, it seems like we're kind of primed that Jetta. like this is actually happening concurrently with the events of Rogue One. Right. But I'm wondering, I'm a little bit janky on the the timeline when it comes to that because right. it seems like we're, we are kind of barreling toward this end game in Rebels, but right. never really not really sure where it officially ends. So is that like too close right. to a new hope to be Jetta? But it seems like they're making they want us to be I there. I think it is because I don't know how much time passes between the scenes in Rogue One. Yeah, there's that. Either, also, the idea between Jetta and the rest of Rogue One. Because the ghost appears at the Battle of Scarif. The ghost yes. is there above at the end of Rogue One um, as kind of a mm -hmm. cameo thing. I mean, it is right now kind of under Kalos and Rex's command. So maybe they took, maybe they're the ones that actually <laughs> took it to that panel while things Good are Lord. going on. Yeah, but all. then Chopper, Chopper is in, is at Yavin. True. Chopper's at Yavin. So if in Rogue One, if actually Paul when, Vera. yeah. So I don't know. I was a little I confused. Think by that, it. I think this is supposed to be Jetta. Okay. I don't know why. Like, I didn't even think about Jetta or Scarif or I. I automatically assumed it was Alderaan. Mm. We're not quite there yet. Yeah, we're not that far. Ahead yet. Like that was just my like immediate thought. I was like, what are they exploding? Alderaan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But yes, we're not there yet. We but now there. that you say it, I'm like, oh duh, I'm an idiot. That's fine. No, you're not. There's many no, planets that have been fine. destroyed. <laughs> they destroy tons of shit. I'm not even mad about it. Exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us today. Tune in next time as we continue our season four coverage. No sneak peeks this week. We have two episodes to cover next week. Until then, Ooh. please follow us wherever you get your podcast. Leave us those five-star reviews. Check out our website at bohemiangeekstudies.com where you can watch all of our episodes and enjoy Colleen's book corner where she's reviewing Star Wars literature. And then contact us through email and social media. You want to see uh, Flo's, you want to see Flo's memes? Find us on Instagram. <laughs> I mean, if it's not Visago singing YMCA, I'm going to be really disappointed. I'm not going to lie. I was searching. There's no good picture of him, like with his arms up in Shut the any fuck kind up. of formation. I can't, I can't All right, find draw it. it. We want to see the Anders <laughs> no, Drew can't. original. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, we do. No, you really don't. <laughs> but all right, guys. with horns. <laughs> As always, keep telling other nerdy nice to come and join us. It really does help. You can also head over to ForgottenEntertainment.com. Check out all the offerings from the Forgotten Entertainment family, including yet another Star Wars podcast where we are examining different facets of the Star Wars canon and are in the middle of taking apart Star Wars visions. So much fun. But until next time, lightsabers up and keep those episodes streaming. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. That was fun.